The third IPM strategy involves the use of biopesticides. Unlike conventional pesticides, biopesticides use naturally occurring substances to control pests and are considered eco-friendly. There are generally two classes of biopesticides, microbial pesticides and plant-incorporated protectants. The first of these, microbial pesticides, use a microorganism such as a fungus, virus, or bacteria as the active pesticide ingredient. Plant-incorporated protectants are pesticidal substances produced by genetically modified plants. For example, the gene for a pesticidal protein can be incorporated into a plant's genetic material so that the plant becomes the manufacturer of a pesticide that will protect it from enemy pests or diseases. There are several advantages to using biopesticides as part of an IPM program. They are less toxic than conventional pesticides, are effective in small quantities, and only affect the target pest in closely related organisms, unlike the organism massacring from conventional pesticides. There are a few drawbacks to the use of biopesticides as part of an IPM program, but much of the controversy over their use concerns plant-incorporated protectants from genetically modified organisms. The risk of insect resistance is a top concern among scientists working on developing plant-incorporated protectants for genetically modified grapevines. Perhaps even more of a deterrent to the development of plant incorporated protectants for disease and pest management, however, is the large degree of societal resistance to the development of genetically modified organisms. An important component of the utilization of predators or parasitoids as a pest management strategy is the consideration of how the introduced agent will be integrated into the vineyard ecosystem, that is, where the organism will live, what the organism will eat, etc. The use of refuges or ecological compensation areas is another IPM strategy in which areas of land are devoted to specific vegetation. This added vegetation can incur several potential benefits, including an increase in plant diversity, which can encourage a wider variety of organisms in the vineyard, including natural enemies, and the presence of an alternate habitat and food source that may also enhance populations of natural enemies in the vineyard. However, the main drawback to this management strategy which is likely to occur if the refuge plant species are not well chosen, can be the attraction of new, unwanted pests into the vineyard. Cover cropping is yet another IPM strategy in which plants are grown between rows of grapevines, often during vineyard dormant seasons. Though similar to refuges or ecological compensation areas, cover cropping can maintain a healthy, diverse population of natural pest enemies by providing habitats and food sources for them during grapevine off-seasons, when the risk for the development of vineyard monocultures is otherwise very high. In addition to the enhanced population of natural enemies that cover cropping can incur, several other benefits from this IPM strategy include soil enrichment and erosion prevention. However, drawbacks include competition for resources such as water, which may reduce vine vigor in non-irrigated vineyards, and an increased risk of frost damage. Potentially one of the most effective IPM strategies, if not the most interesting, involves the use of semiochemicals. This strategy takes advantage of the complex system of chemical signaling of plants and insects to influence the behavior of pests. Sex pheromones are among the most popular semiochemicals used for pest management. Sex pheromones can reduce pest populations by disrupting mate finding behavior. If the synthetic sex pheromone is distributed over a large enough area, the male pest, who locates the female by following the pheromone concentration gradient, cannot find his mate to reproduce. In effect, pest populations dwindle. Another way semiochemicals can be used to manage pests is through a push-pull technique, in which pests are pulled or lured out of and away from the vineyard by attractant chemicals distributed outside the vineyard, as well as being pushed out of the vineyard by repellent chemicals. Semiochemicals can also be used on baited traps to attract and kill pests. The use of semiochemicals as part of an IPM program has several advantages. First, semiochemicals can be used to detect and monitor pest populations by luring insects to baited traps where they can be counted. This is particularly valuable in IPM programs for which determining optimal times to implement control tools based on pest populations is integral. Additionally, sex pheromones are very active in small amounts and inexpensive, making them a good choice economically. And unlike insecticides, which fail to reduce pest populations over the long run, sex pheromones have been successful at long-term control of pest populations. Moreover, sex pheromones are species-specific and not harmful to other animals or the environment. While few drawbacks, if any, exist, there are several factors which must be considered when using semiochemicals to manage pest populations. Namely, mating disruption requires the distribution of sex pheromones over a large enough area to prevent the immigration of outside mated females into the vineyard. 
The use of sex pheromones also requires a longer length of time to manage pest populations, since numbers decline once the pests die without reproducing. The final component of an effective IPM program is weather monitoring. Simple enough, knowing when it will rain is essential to planning effective applications of pesticides or other topical treatments that could be washed away by rainwater. Since many problematic molds and fungal diseases are more likely to develop during specific climate conditions, knowing when these conditions are likely to occur can alert wine growers to be proactive about controlling pest or disease problems before they get out of control and cause irreparable damage to their crop. Computer models have greatly assisted in being able to predict rates of pest population development and periods of pathogen infection. The success of any IPM program will depend on careful consideration of the nature of the pest or disease, the control technology, the ecological context, and economic costs. No one strategy is likely to be effective on its own. Rather, as the name suggests, successful integrated pest management requires an integration of these strategies. So, we know our enemy, we had the weapons, now let's kill some bugs. Powdery mildew can be controlled with biopesticides, specifically with the use of the mycoparasite Ampelomyces quitqualis. This mycoparasite grows in branches inside its mildew host, slowing the growth of the mildew and causing it to eventually die. However, the widespread use of this mycoparasite for great powdery mildew management in vineyards is limited by the requirement of free water on the mildew colonies for successful infection by the mycoparasite. Nevertheless, researchers are now working on the design of a simple yet effective system for dispersal of the mycoparasite onto grapevines in vineyards. Weather monitoring can also alert wine growers when conditions favorable to growth of powdery mildew are likely to occur. Bunch rot, caused by the fungus, but try to scenario, can also be controlled with a biopesticide, specifically with the fungus Trichoderma harzianum. This biopesticide is postured to rid grapes of bunch rot by killing Botrytis scenario directly, by competing for resources with Botrytis, or by elevating the grape's own resistance to bunch rot. Though the efficacy of Trichoderma harzianum as a biopesticide has been demonstrated in the lab, it has variable effectiveness in the field environment. Nevertheless, in the face of ever-increasing strains of fungicide-resistant Botrytis scenario, mildly effective biopesticides may be seen as viable alternatives to fungicides in the vineyard. The introduction of the leafhopper's natural enemy into vineyards is one potential means of managing this pest that vectors Pierce's disease. One such enemy is the egg-laying parasitic wasp Anagris epos, whose presence in the vineyards has been shown to reduce leafhopper densities. Additionally, the introduction of refuges or ecological compensation areas, as well as cover crops, has been shown to increase populations of Anagris epos in the vineyard and to subsequently decrease leafhopper populations. However, Highly sophisticated computer models have indicated that a new, more cold-resistant strain of the long-range flying leafhopper, the glassy-winged sharpshooter, may have evolved. This means that the new cold-hardy leafhopper may now be able to travel to new, distant vineyards, like those in Europe. Though it seems like we may be losing the war against our tiny nemeses, there remains hope for one weapon, the power of love. Sex pheromones have proven to be particularly effective at managing the menacing grapeberry moth by mating disruption. Though this love potion may seem like the cure-all, it's not likely to solve all our current disease and pest management problems. For now, our best stratagem for winning the war against our creepy crawly adversaries appears to be combining the powers of biological control, natural enemies, biopesticides, refuges, cover cropping, semiochemicals, and weather monitoring. The more diverse our weapons, the better our chances of getting our grapes back. <laughs>